Hi everybody, it's Lisa from The Bruce Company and today we're going to talk about hydrangeas and try to take a little bit of the mystery out of it, maybe dispel some common misconceptions about what hydrangeas can do and what they can't do. So we're going to cover today the three probably most popular types of hydrangea and we're going to start with the panicled hydrangea. So, or as they are often called, PG hydrangeas. So PG hydrangeas will get, um, they can get quite big. There are a number of different varieties and a number of different sizes, but what characterizes them are they have these sort of cone-shaped blossoms, these cone-shaped flower heads, and they are quite woody, so they do not die back to the ground uh, during the winter, and they are super suitable for very sunny spots. They will flower quite nicely as long as they're getting about four or five hours of sun, but they can take a full sun spot or maybe a spot with hot afternoon sun and no sun in the morning, making them perfect for like west sides. They are super adaptable, although they don't like wet feet, so you wouldn't want to put them in a low spot or where they're going to feel like the soil is compacted but super easy to take care of. There are different sizes from things like Bobo that are maybe going to top out at two or three feet all the way up to varieties like um, Limelight and Quickfire which will probably grow nine to twelve. So wherever you have a sunny spot in your yard no matter how big it is we've got a PG hydrangea that will fit that space. They usually start blooming about end of July and continue to the fall and a super nice plant. The second one we're going to cover, these are the smooth leaf hydrangeas. Now often you might be all familiar with the Annabelle variety and there are lots of smooth leaf hydrangeas out that have a white flower. These will flower in almost total shade. They need very little light to trigger the flowers. And the exciting thing is that they have come out on the market the last few years with some that have colored flowers in just, instead of the just white. And this is one of them. This is Mini Mauvette uh, Invincible Spirit. Oh, no. Mini Mauvette Incredible. Sorry about that. So um, Mini Mauvette is going to get a round shaped flower, kind of like a, like a snowball. Sometimes this is called snowball bush. And it has a sort of pinkish cast. And like I said, does quite well in a spot that maybe is a little more wet. But certainly, it'll take a lot of shade. Now this is one of the big leaf hydrangeas, Hydrangea macrophylla. Now this hydrangea needs a morning sun location, probably about three to four hours of good strong morning light to set flower, but shade at the hot part of the day because what they do is they will wilt like nobody's business. Um, uh, big leaf hydrangeas or Hydrangea macrophylla means macro, macro big filla water so they are water hogs so oftentimes in a sunnier spot you will see them wilt out in the afternoon and although they can handle that being watered and can come back quite nicely from that eventually that's going to stress the plant out now a lot of people come into the store and they want to know how to make their hydrangeas blue this group of hydrangeas, the big leaf hydrangeas, are the group that some varieties are able to switch color back and forth between blue and pink. And that is triggered by how much acid is in the soil. Here in Wisconsin, we tend to be a little bit on the alkaline side, so the plants are going to naturally be pink. If you want to make them bluer, um, you would add, this is garden sulfur or soil acidifier. It's the stuff that you used in high school chemistry labs where it's sort of chunky, um, it's slow release, it's really gentle. A Couple times a year you would take a, about a cup of this and put it around the base of the plant and sort of fork it in a little bit, water it in and then put the mulch all over it. And that will help trigger the flower color change. Now I would guess that around here, the best you're gonna get is this sort of mauvey color it would be really hard unless you're planting in containers to get hydrangeas to be that perfect blue that you see on the east coast but little fact for you people on the east coast don't want them blue they want them to be pink so they add lime to their soil to sweeten it so there you go the hydrangea is always bluer on the other side of the fence for sure so stop in and see us we've got all kinds of choices for you tons of hydrangeas to get your yard kind of spruced up and looking really beautiful into the fall. Happy summer gardening from all of us here at the Bruce Company.